The learner of the Quran is learning something that Shadidul Quwa taught to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, making him qawi, making him strong. And then he passed that on to the Sahaba, making them strong. And they passed it on generations. And today you and I are learning the Quran, which is making us what? Strong. When Najmi idha hawa ma dhanna sahibukum wa ma rawa. Now, now we get to the juicy part. A young man came to me in the audience yesterday and said, how come Allah says this about Jibreel? Allah didn't mention his name here. Allah didn't mention Jibreel's name here. So let me translate this for you first. Allamahu shadidul quwa. The one intense in great powers, intense in great powers is the one who taught him. Who's this intense one in great powers? That's Jibreel alayhi salam. Taught who? Taught? The Prophet ﷺ. But the who, the who could mean taught him and it could mean taught it. So the, the mighty one taught the Prophet and the mighty one taught the Quran. Both meanings are true. Both meanings are withheld. Which is also interesting because both the Prophet and the Quran were referred in the, the ayat before. When he said, ma dalla sahibukum, it was about the Prophet. Wa ma yantiku anil hawa was about the Prophet. In huwa illa wahyun yuha was about the Quran and the who in Allamahu combines the Prophet and the Quran. So it, he, the Jibreel Aysam taught it and Jibreel Aysam taught him. But the question the young man asked was really nice. Why is he saying the mighty one taught him? Like the great intensely strong one taught him. What's the point of saying that? We're going to try to explore that little by little. First of all, Quwa is the plural of Quwa. Quwa is the plural of Quwa. Quwa means might, strength. And Quwa is powers, strengths. What Allah is saying is this messenger, Jibreel, doesn't just have one kind of strength. He has multiple strengths. And each one of those strengths are intense. Okay, so Shadid adds intensity. And Quwa is multidimensional strengths. His ability to travel is like no one else. His ability to understand is like no one else. His ability to destroy is like no one else. His ability to lead is like no Each one of those is strengths, you understand? So he's got multiple dimensions to his strength. Perhaps encapsulated in the narration by the 600 or so wings that he has, each wing might represent a different strength, might represent something else. Because he only showed a few of them or one of them to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, you know, there, there, there's so many dimensions to that. The, the way that he's being described. Then, uh, a shadid fihi tahdid. Now, the one that's great in strength, the word shadid, mighty and sh- great strengths, why would there be a need to mention that? One, need, one reason could be it's a threat. By the way, my teacher is really strong. And when you're messing with me and this education process and you're making fun of it, you're actually also making fun of my teacher who's really strong. You don't want to mess with him. So the shadidul quwa becomes kind of a kinaya, an indirect threat to those that are poking fun at the revelation. You understand? So that's another uh, implication. But then this is where it gets really beautiful. Kinayatun ila ma'allamahu wa ta'thiruhu ala al-muta'allim. When I say I learned from a genius teacher, you know what that means? That I was benefiting from some of his genius. When I say I learned from a very creative artist, then I'm benefiting from his what? Creativity. It's making me more creative, right? When I'm learning from a mighty teacher, what's the, what am I getting from it? Might. Good. It's as if Allah is saying, this messenger from your eyes looks like he has no political clout. He has no backing. He has no financial backing. You millionaires of Quraysh are strong. He's in a position of weakness. All the people that follow him are bankrupt or slaves or beat up. So he looks like he's in in a position of weakness. But the one teaching him is the ultimately strong creation of Allah, Shadidul Quwa. And he is making him ultimately strong. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not true. This is actually a very, pun intended, empowering message. The learner of the Qur'an is learning something that Shadidul Quwa taught 
to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam making him qawi making him strong and then he passed that on to the sahaba making them strong and they passed it on generations and today you and I are learning the Quran which is making us what strong it gives us strength because it's sore. The teacher wasn't just described as someone knowledgeable or someone trustworthy, somebody incredibly strong. It's empowering to me to learn the Quran. It empowered the Messenger وسلم, to learn the Quran. And so the, the religion doesn't stand in a position of weakness, even if it looks like the Muslims are downtrodden or they're losing the battle, or they look like so many Sahaba died at Uhud, or the Sahaba are getting burnt you know, with coal, or stepped on, or tortured, or whatever. All that looks like weakness, 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 and weakness, but actually, no one on earth is stronger than them. Nobody's stronger than them. They're in the position of strength, because they have something nobody else has. They have Iman. They have Quran inside them. And by the way, if the mightiest one was needed to teach it, right? Now, for example, if I was, if somebody is teaching somebody Olympic weightlifting, right? Don't they have to be super strong themselves to be able to teach it? So the thing that requires great strength to teach, the, the thing itself must require great strength. It must be very strong for you, and you have to be really strong to be able to teach it. Jibreel was needed to teach the Quran because the Quran is that powerful. The Quran is not weak. The Quran does not succumb to attacks. The Quran does not surrender to criticisms and whims and mockery. It, do it doesn't fall to those things because it's so mighty that it couldn't be delivered by anyone other than the mightiest of all angels who had to use all of his different mights to be able to deliver the Quran. <laughs> We're learning about the power of the Quran. And what it took to even reveal the Qur'an to the Prophet ﷺ. We pass by this, oh yeah, Jibreel ﷺ gave the Qur'an. Nah bro, there's a lot more going on here. This is the mightiest of Allah's angels being given the heaviest task. And then Allah, how does he describe the Qur'an itself? Inna sanulki alayka qawlan thaqila. I'm going to give you a heavy word. I'm going to give you a heavy word. And then he says, لَوَ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلْ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشِيَةِ اللَّهِ If you saw that coming down on a mountain, you would see it explode from the fear of Allah. Oof. This revelation is now coming down. The, the might, the power of the Qur'an is being described through the teacher that had this ultimate strength when he was delivering it. Then in this, this, this mighty, by the way, this is, you know that tanween in the previous ayah, in huwa illa wahyun, great revelation, that is being revealed, now you're getting a taste of how great it is. You understand? It's Allah is explaining that tanween now with this next ayah. Then there's also this idea of chain of narration, which any, of, any Muslim who's familiar with the idea of a hadith, the concept of hadith, you know that the chain of narration has to be strong, right? Now, the, the, here's the thing. It, it, this is incredible. You have to establish a chain between God and His Messenger. And the chain is established Allah, the mighty angel, and the prophet. And they are all linked now. There's a chain of narration. Who's teaching him? Allah's angel. That's one of the most incredible things that I found in this ayah. I, it blew my mind. Shadid in Arabic. Remember, I didn't go root words on you here. I, every word I have a whole slide for it. I'm just going to talk this out with you. This, this is too heavy to break up. Shadid, the verb shadda was used for tying up knots and ropes and strings. Shadda al-wathaq, shadda al-uqda. That's what it was when you make the rope tight. So it has to do with ropes. Quwa is quwa al-fatl and quwa al-habl. It was used for strong ropes. The original meaning of quwa is a rope. So shadid in its secondary meaning has a rope. And quwa in its secondary meaning also has a rope. And the next word is going to be du mirratin. And mirra is one of the Arabic words, ancient words for a rope. So shadid is rope somehow. Kuwa is associated with rope somehow. And mirra, which I haven't explained yet, is also associated with what? Rope. What is the Quran called? Hold on to the rope of Allah. <laughs> The, the mighty one 
with the tightest rope delivering it to the Prophet ﷺ. This literally a rope. Allah says, the Messenger says in one narration, It is the extent, the Quran is the extended rope of Allah from the sky to the earth. And that the, the Jibreel Jibri Islam is now the mighty one holding on to the rope. It, the, the, the imagery is so beautiful and powerful. When you are holding on to the Quran, you're holding on to a rope. Now imagine what's on the other end of that rope. It's Allah Azza wa Jal. It goes all the way up through the heavens, through Jibreel, all the way up to the Prophet, all the way up to Allah Himself. SubhanAllah. This is, this is just inside the language of Allamahu Shadidul Qua. Now, I'm going to make you, I want to motivate, I'm going to make you feel bad as a way of motivating you. I know shaming is not a good motivator. Um, I know that because in Pakistan, the only way we motivate people is by shaming people. Like that's how we wake someone up and motivate them to do something with their life, right? But let me just say, studying the Arabic language and understanding its intricacies will open up so much of the Quran for you. Like today's lens for contemplating Quran is language. Right now, you don't, many of you don't know Arabic. That's okay. My job is to make you feel bad about that but also to tell you it's easy to learn. I'm telling you, it is. You're like, no, it's not. You just, there's so much information. Yes, it is a lot of information. So was programming and you're now writing code for apps, you dummy. So is tax code, but you're an accountant. That stuff is way harder. So is calculus, but you're taking it in class and not complaining about it. So is biology in high school. A lot of information. So is the SATs. It's information. So what? Why are you intimidated? You're so capable of learning so many complicated things. But th when it comes to this, I, I, I don't know. I've seen kids play some video games. The amount of menus and submenus and items and upgrades and secret locations and unlock keys that they know off the top of their head. Oh, it's easy. You just got to press X, X square, R1, L1 and make dua. That's, that's how you kill the bot. They're like, how did you know that, bro? You memorized it for every, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. I, I, I went to, I was in Pakistan and the, in one of the universities, they were having a Tekken tournament. It was pretty cool. And I go, oh, you want to play Tekken? You're too Islamic for Tekken. I'm like, they don't know. They don't know. I beat the guy, right? And he's like, how do you know these combos? I was like, I memorized them in uh, college. <laughs> They're still the same, <laughs> right? We're capable of learning. We just tell ourselves we're not. And shaitan doesn't hold you back from learning like Final Fantasy 87. He doesn't, he doesn't hold you back from learning like every character and every... You know so much about anime, it's scary. How do you even remember these names? They all sound the same to me. You remember all of them. You remember all these movie references. All these... You, you're hafal of songs. The Quran, I, I don't know. This is so much work. Ah, mashallah, you must have worked so hard. No. Any the human being is capable of learning anything that is becomes a labor of love. Anything. Human beings are in, the brain is incredible. It's incredible. And on top of that, when you're trying to learn this language for the sake of Allah, you're can, you're holding to a rope. So divine help starts, you know, by Wi-Fi coming through into your heart and your soul and your brain, and it opens up in ways you never imagined before. How dare you say it's hard? How dare you? Like, that's an excuse. You better watch out. That is not an excuse. And so, anybody, and by the way, whoever holds on to the Quran is becoming what? Strong. Your mind will become strong. Your memory will become strong. Your ability will become strong. Your confidence will become, everything will become strong. Just hold on to Quran. Begin. So I'll tell you this last one. The reason I brought all this up. You remember I told you there's three kinds of audiences? You guys remember that? Anybody remember what they were? Neutral? Up until now, up until ayah number four, the language was the language of the neutral, the, un, the unsure, or the opponent. Ah, uh, everybody's clear. That was the language of the opponent because very strong language. But he doesn't say here, لَقَدْ عَلَّمَهُ شَدِيدُ الْقُوَى إِنَّهُ عَلَّمَهُ شَدِيدُ الْقُوَى Yeah, yeah. Or, إِنَّ شَدِيدَ الْقُوَى عَلَّمَهُ Or, لَإِنَّ شَدِيدَ الْقُوَى No emphasis. No stressors, neutral style, neutral style. But we know that the conversation's happening with opponents, right? So the question then is, 
why would you be talking to an opponent and use what? Neutral style. One, one of my friends uh, was traveling told me, you got to watch this show. You got to watch this show. It's like, I don't know. I have nothing to do right now. Okay, I'll watch an episode. He, made, he showed me an episode of One Punch Man. Some of you might know what that is. I watched one episode. I didn't need to watch anything ever again. I was like, I'm, I'm done. Is it, are all the episodes like this? He goes, exactly like this. I was like, then why are you watching? There's this huge monster trying to kill this guy. And he's just calm like, hmm, I see that you're uh, strong. I see that you're about to use your ultimate move. And he's just completely unfazed and moved. Why is he unfazed and unmoved? Because he already knows this guy is no match for my strength. It may look otherwise, but I don't have to be intimidated by him. I don't have to respond to him. By the time Allah gets to where the Quran comes from, there is no need to stress the strength of Jibreel alayhi salam or to prove the strength of the, the power of the Quran and the empowerment of its messenger alayhi salatu salam. Just normal speech as if to say, you have no power against this. You are powerless against this. It's incredible. Sometimes stress makes language amazing. Sometimes removing stress makes the language amazing. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Quran in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Quran in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayan is to make deeper study of the Quran accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the deeper look of the Quran for this surah and many other surahs on BayinaTV.com under the deeper look section.